Hey there, I'm Sarah, a single mom trying to juggle life, work, and raising my amazing five-year-old son, Tommy. Before I dive into my story, do me a solid and hit that like and subscribe button. Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this wild ride. I'm an accountant at this fancy firm, busting my butt every day to keep our little family afloat. My routine's like clockwork. Drop Tommy at daycare, race to work, crunch numbers all day, then dash back to pick him up. It's exhausting. But hey, that's life, right? At work, I've got this friend, Lisa. She's always got my back. Sarah, you're like Wonder Woman, she tells me one day. I just laugh it off. More like Tired Woman, I reply. My boss, Mr. Thompson, he's this stern dude. Always professional, you know? One time he catches me yawning. Late night, Sarah? He asks. I nod, thinking about Tommy's fever that kept us up. Just make sure it doesn't affect your work, he says, walking away. Everything's going smooth until bam. Disaster strikes. I'm about to leave for work when my phone rings. It's the daycare. Miss Sarah, we've got a gas leak. We're closed today. My heart drops. I start calling everyone I know, but no luck. What am I supposed to do? Mommy, are we going on an adventure? Tommy asks, his eyes all wide and excited. That's when it hits me. I'm taking him to work. Mr. Thompson will understand, right? He's human, after all. We get to the office, and I'm a nervous wreck. I set Tommy up in my cubicle with some coloring books. Sweetie, you gotta be super quiet, okay? I whisper. He nods. All serious-like. I'm typing away, trying to finish this huge report, when Tommy starts humming, loudly. Shh, baby, I say, glancing around nervously. That's when Lisa pops her head over the cubicle wall. Sarah, what's going on? She asks. I explain everything, feeling like I'm about to cry. Lisa's face softens. I've got your back. I'll watch him during your meeting. I could hug her right then and there. Lisa, you're a lifesaver, I say, relief washing over me. The meeting starts, and I'm presenting my report like a boss. But then I see Mr. Thompson's face. He's staring at Tommy, who's happily coloring with Lisa outside the conference room. His expression darkens, and my stomach drops. Meeting adjourned, he snaps. Sarah, my office, now. I follow him, my legs feeling like jelly. Mr. Thompson, I can explain. I start, but he cuts me off. You've violated company policy. You're fired, effective immediately. It's like a punch to the gut. Please, I beg. I had no choice. I'm a single mom. That's not the company's problem, he says coldly. Clear out your desk. I walk out in a daze. Lisa tries to comfort me, but I can barely hear her. I pack up my stuff, Tommy looking confused. Mommy, why are you crying? He asks. We get to the car, and that's when it all hits me. How am I going to pay rent? Buy food? I hold Tommy close, tears streaming down my face. As I sit there, feeling lost and alone, I can't help but think about how a little compassion could have changed everything. Isn't that what being human is all about? Kindness? Understanding? Especially when times are tough. I thought I knew what humanity meant. But now... Now I'm not so sure. Mommy, can we get the rainbow cereal? Tommy asks, his little face hopeful as we walk down the grocery aisle. Not today, sweetie. How about some oatmeal instead? His disappointment breaks my heart. Later that night, after tucking him in, I break down crying. I hear tiny footsteps approaching. Don't be sad, Mommy. I can share my piggy bank money. I hug him tight, forcing a smile. That's very sweet, but Mommy's okay. Go back to sleep, baby. The next day, I'm at this little cafe, scanning job listings on my beat-up laptop, when I overhear something interesting. So, you're saying the company can't fire me just because I took time off for my kid's surgery? I perk up, listening to a guy talking to a woman in a sharp suit. Exactly, Mr. Johnson. That's family responsibility discrimination. We've got a solid case. Before I know it, I'm on my feet, walking towards their table. My heart's pounding, but I manage to speak up. Excuse me, I couldn't help overhearing. I think... I think something similar happened to me. The woman looks at me, her eyes sharp but kind. I'm Maria Rodriguez, attorney at law. Why don't you sit down and tell me about it? I spill my guts, telling her everything that happened with Mr. Thompson and the company. By the time I'm done, Maria's looking at me like I've handed her the case of the century. Sarah, what happened to you wasn't just unfair. 
It was illegal. We could take this to court. My stomach does a flip. Court? I... I don't know if I can afford... Pro bono, Maria cuts in. This case could set a precedent. I'd be honored to represent you. Free of charge. I'm stunned. For the first time in weeks, I feel a glimmer of hope. But then fear creeps in. What if they retaliate? What if I never work in this town again? Maria leans forward, her eyes intense. Sarah, they've already taken your job. What else can they take? This is about standing up for yourself, for Tommy, and for every parent out there juggling work and family. She's right. I think about Tommy. About all the times I've had to choose between being a good employee and a good mother. About all the other parents out there facing the same impossible choices. Okay, I say, my voice stronger than I expected. Let's do this. Maria smiles, pulling out a stack of papers. As I start signing, my hand shakes a little. I'm scared, yeah, but there's something else too. Hope. Determination. For the first time since that awful day at the office, I feel like I'm taking control back. Mr. Thompson won't know what hit him, Maria says with a grin. I can't help but smile back. You know what? I think I'm ready for this fight. As I finish signing, I picture Tommy's face. I'm doing this for him, for us, and for every working parent out there. Watch out, world. Sarah's coming back swinging. Man, I never thought I'd see my name in the headlines. Single mom takes on corporate giant. It's surreal. The phone's been ringing off the hook with reporters wanting my story. One day, I get this official-looking letter. It's from Mr. Thompson's fancy lawyers, offering me a settlement. Maria's eyes narrow when she sees it. This is insultingly low, Sarah. They're trying to scare you off. I crumple up the letter. Not a chance. We're seeing this through. The courtroom's packed when Lisa takes the stand. I hold my breath as she speaks. The company's attitude towards working parents was... hostile, to say the least. Sarah was one of our best employees, but she was constantly made to feel guilty for having a child. Mr. Thompson's face is stone cold. His lawyer jumps up. Isn't it true that Miss Walker frequently missed work or left early? Lisa doesn't miss a beat. Only for genuine emergencies involving her son, which is more than I can say for some of the executives who'd leave early for golf games. I could hug her right then and there, but not everyone's as brave as Lisa. John from accounting stutters through his testimony, clearly terrified. I... I don't really remember. Maybe she was late sometimes. It's hard not to feel betrayed, but I get it. They're scared. The company's lawyer is relentless. Your Honor, Miss Walker's attendance record speaks for itself. She was unreliable and used her child as an excuse. Those words cut deep. That night, I break down. Maria, what if they're right? What if I'm just a bad employee? Maria grabs my shoulders. Sarah, listen to me. You're an excellent employee and an excellent mother. Don't let them make you doubt yourself. But the stress is getting to me. I can't sleep, can't eat. Tommy notices. Mommy, why are you sad all the time? I try to put on a brave face, but it's hard. Maria's been a godsend, though. She's over at my place one night, helping me with job applications. When her phone buzzes, her eyes go wide. Sarah, you're not going to believe this. We just got an anonymous email dump from inside the company. We stay up all night, poring over the emails. My jaw drops as I read Mr. Thompson's words. These family emergencies are getting out of hand. Find a way to get rid of the single parents. They're a liability. The next day in court, you could hear a pin drop as Maria presents the evidence. Your Honor, these emails clearly show a pattern of discrimination against employees with family responsibilities, particularly single parents, like my client. The judge's face is thunderous as he looks at Mr. Thompson. I can hardly believe it when he starts speaking. In light of this new evidence, I find in favor of the plaintiff. The company is ordered to pay substantial damages and offer Miss Walker her job back. The courtroom erupts. Maria hugs me tight, but I feel numb. Victory, sure, but go back there? To that toxic environment? As we leave the courthouse, reporters shout questions. Maria fields most of them, but one gets through to me. Miss Walker, will you be returning to your old job? I look at the crowd, at Maria, thinking about Tommy waiting at home. Then I square my shoulders and face the cameras. No, I won't. But this fight was never just about me or my job. It was about standing up for what's right for all working parents out there. And that fight 
It's just beginning. I never expected my case to blow up like this. Suddenly, I'm getting calls from working parents all over the country, sharing their stories. It's heartbreaking and empowering at the same time. One morning, I'm making breakfast when Tommy points at the TV. Mommy, that's your boss. Sure enough, there's Mr. Thompson, looking like he's aged 10 years overnight. The ticker at the bottom reads, CEO resigns amid discrimination scandal. The board of directors has accepted Mr. Thompson's resignation, a stern-faced woman announces. We are committed to creating a more inclusive workplace. With the settlement money, I've got a chance to start fresh. I'm sitting at my kitchen table, crunching numbers, when it hits me. Why work for someone else when I can create the kind of workplace I've always dreamed of? I call Maria. I'm thinking of starting my own accounting firm. Am I crazy? Sarah, that's brilliant. You could set an example for the whole industry. And just like that, Walker Accounting is born. I lease a small office space and set up a cozy corner for an on-site daycare. My first hire? A part-time nanny who doubles as our receptionist. I'm nervous on opening day, but then Lisa walks in, resume in hand. I heard you're hiring, she grins. Before I know it, we're swamped with clients. Turns out, there are a lot of people who want to work with a company that values family. One day, I overhear two of my employees chatting. Can you believe we get to bring our kids to work and flexible hours? I know, right? I actually get to see my daughter's school play this year. It makes all the late nights and stress worth it. Months fly by and the business is booming. We've had to move to a bigger office twice already. But the best part? That little daycare corner has turned into a full-fledged childcare center. Today, I'm picking up Tommy from there. He comes running, waving a drawing. Mommy, look! I drew our family. I kneel down to look. There's me, Tommy, and a bunch of other stick figures. Who are all these people, sweetie? That's our work family, silly, he laughs. Later that evening, I'm at the community center, speaking to a group of single parents. I see the fear in their eyes, the same fear I had not so long ago. I'm not going to lie to you, I tell them. It's tough. There will be days when you want to give up. But you're stronger than you know, and you're not alone. As I share my story, I see hope beginning to spark in their eyes. It reminds me why I fought so hard, why I continue to fight. Walking home, I think about how far we've come, from that terrifying day when I lost my job to now, running a successful business that puts families first. It hasn't been easy, but it's been worth every struggle. Because in the end, it's not just about making a living, it's about making a difference. And as I tuck Tommy into bed that night, I know that's exactly what we're doing, one day at a time. The story of Sarah and Tommy's journey has come to an end. Now, I've got a question for you. Do you think companies should be legally required to provide on-site childcare and flexible hours for working parents? Or should it be left up to each business to decide? This is a complex issue with valid arguments on both sides. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your experiences and opinions matter and they could help shape the future of workplace policies. If you found Sarah's story inspiring or thought-provoking, please hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more stories that challenge the status quo and explore important social issues. Your support helps us continue to create content that matters. Thanks for watching, and let's keep the conversation going.